Hello everybody, Jim Feist and Hank Goldberg. It is Preakness Week, it's NBA Playoff Week, and it's Baseball Weekend. We've got some big matchups in baseball as well. Good morning, Hank. Hi, Jim. How you doing? I'm doing great. I had the over in the uh, Warriors game last night. That was easy. Um, the great, I mean, just how great basketball games. I mean, the other night, the, we, you know, with the um, the Bucks and the and the Raptors, that was an unbelievable game. The final 10 points, they come back, they cover the number by scoring the final 10 points. That's pretty incredible. These are uh, some great athletes out there. It's amazing to watch. And the news on Durant is I'm, I'm not sure we're going to see Durant um, until maybe the final series, if ever. That series, that, that injury must be much worse than they said. Well, they never said. They, they didn't know what they said. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, latest report was that he's going to be out for at least three more games. And he uh, hasn't been able to uh, take part in any practice. So they've been pretty honest about it. They never said that he was a, They never said anything about it other than the fact that he wasn't going to be available for at least a week, and then they take another look at him. Right. Nobody said anything except the, the jerks on television. Anyway, um, got uh, uh, the uh, Preakness. Uh, I talked to the trainer of uh, Bourbon War. Uh, they're going to make an equipment adjustment to get him out of the gate a little quicker. Uh, he said that the speed is uh, for number one and three, and he's in the two spot. He said they'll break in front of him, create space for him. He's going to have an ideal trip out of those two. And... Uh, yeah, he's training great. Uh, he told me he looked at film of uh, number seven horse, uh, always mining, uh, who I wasn't sure about because he's always he's only run at Laurel. That's where all his wins are. are. He said he's a very good horse, so you may want to consider him for your gimmicks. But anyway, uh, I asked him who he who he worries about. Uh, he said Owendale, number five, who was so uh, two out of three this year. And you have to respect, uh, I guess, the backer horse. Uh, uh, who, who is, you know, uh, he sees the class of the race. So. But uh, I like this two horse a lot. I talked to Mark Henning, the trainer, and uh, he said the horse is training great. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, I have Kepka, who got off to a good start in the, uh, in the PGA. The yeah. guy who made a run at him yesterday, flopped today, already, it's over. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> and so we'll see what Kepka does today. But uh, seven under yesterday is a tremendous start. And I got him at nine to one. I guess uh, he went down to six to one at post time. Yeah, they're finally catching up to him as being a pretty damn good golfer. Um, it's amazing how they talk. It's amazing how they talk about everybody else all the time and. And here's a guy that just keeps dominating in the majors. I have him as well. I have pretty good. I got a pretty good play on him. As much as well. Well, uh, you know, Johnson is making a run. Uh, he's a serious contender. Uh, now he uh, he got up to five under and uh, got up uh, took a bogey, but he's still a guy to be reckoned with over a four over a four day, four days. Uh, there are some guys who are at one and two under. Uh, Patrick uh, Cantley, who I also uh, took a play on, uh, he's playing well today, and I think he's either two or three under, and he's a steady player. He'll be a factor. So, you know, they got a long way to go. Um, and uh, I guess uh, besides that, uh, there's the NBA. I said that uh, uh, that I thought that um, that uh, those two guards would, would show up for, uh, and that uh, Golden State wouldn't have a, such an easy time yesterday. But uh, uh, they came back and won. They didn't cover. But uh, I loved the over last night, and the reason I liked it was I, I thought McCullough would have a big game. And that they were they were just tired, and worn out, 
and uh, you know couldn't really. Uh, I, I thought this uh, first game in that series was a total throwout. But uh, there was some competitive games in that series. And then we got the uh, the Raptors against the Bucks. I mean, that was a big, um, that, that was a shocking ending, and a bad beat for anybody that beat had the Raptors plus six and a half or six. The only time I don't he, expect that. I, I don't expect that guy for the Raptors to have a game like he had. He was unconscious. Uh, he couldn't miss. Well, Lowry's uh, that was the best game I've ever seen Lowry play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the best game he's ever played. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I, I don't expect another game like that out of him. Well, I would say that's true. I mean, he and um, Leonard both had, you know, 30, 30 issue, whatever it was. And, um, but the Bucks. Well, actually, uh, they did a nice job on Leonard in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they did. They did. They did slow him down the last few minutes for sure. And he, you know, fatigue is uh, when you get a player that has to carry the carry a team for so long. It, the fatigue does get to you, and this has been a long grind. But you know, these uh, these players, they're up, it, the talent is amazing. These guys are really incredibly good. It's fun to I'll watch. I'll tell you one thing that uh, last night's game showed me. Uh, at some point, they're going to need the guy that everybody says they don't need. <laughs> and uh, I don't know when he's going to be available, if at all, like you said. Well, there's no question. Uh, Talking about Durant, of course. Yeah, if, 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 they, if they move on and have to play uh, Milwaukee, especially, a deep team like that, without him, it might show up there. Because... Um, well, we'll show up there because Milwaukee is, in my opinion, Milwaukee's far better than than the, than Portland. So if they end up with that kind of a series, um, it could be very difficult without Durant. Although I know the style is different, and but it's it's tough. I mean, they got they got Cousins and Durant out. I mean, they're two big cogs in the wheel. I know they're they're winning, but. Uh, I think they're stronger in that final series with Durant on the floor as well. So I agree with you. And have to have to mention, Hank, uh, the World Series of Poker starts next week, and that is a huge event for Las Vegas. Uh, millions and millions of dollars and, and half a million poker players come to town, and all the, all the venues in town We'll have big events, so if, if you're a poker player, this is the place to be. Come on out um, to Las Vegas. Um, I don't know if you have any interest in poker at all, Hank, but we'll follow it at all. But I do play in, in all of those events, so it's, it's a big time for Vegas and, and for a lot of us. Well, I used to watch uh, a lot of poker years ago when I was working for the Greek. Because he used to play with all the big guys like Buggy Pearson, uh, Joel Bronson. They used to have some great card games over at the Dunes, and they played for days at a time. And uh, it was uh, fascinating to watch those guys. So they were some. Uh, they, they, I mean, those were the days when they first started the poker, poker tournament downtown. At uh, when uh, when they first started to televise the event, and uh, Jimmy was uh, on the telecast. Tom Brookshire was the uh, was the host of the show with Jimmy. Jimmy was up in his room uh, one one uh, one day uh, before the telecast. Brookshire called him up. He said, "Jimmy, you gotta come down here." He said, "There's all kinds of women around." Jimmy said, "She says I haven't." Uh, I haven't had sex since uh, <laughs> no, November. And Brookshire said, what year? <laughs> oh, that's a great line. <laughs> what, what year? Uh, there aren't too many of those old guys left anymore. Doyle is still around. I know he's had some bad poor health in recent years, but 
he is, he's still amongst us, and, and he's, a, he's a great guy, for one, I know him, and uh, unbelievable player. Uh, you don't see him much in the tournament world anymore because those events are too long, but he does play a lot of cash games. But, uh, yeah, sports and poker, that's, uh, that's pretty much my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hank, uh, I know you're busy this weekend. Uh, you've got a lot of stuff going on. Anything you want to cover before we sign off? Not really. I think, you know, between the PGA and the uh, and uh, what's going on with that and what's going on with the Freak News, that's my weekend. Okay, well, Hank, we'll talk to you um, uh, next week, Monday. We'll cover everything. I'm going to continue here and talk a little bit longer about some baseball and give a free, couple free picks to the, uh, to the players. I'm, I'm going to try to do that a little bit every day and let them know that when they tune into the podcast, you can not only get our plays at jimfeist.com, but we'll give you some free plays um, along the way when you listen in. And I know, Hank, you just kind of gave out a lot of free information on horse racing, so I'm not asking you to do any any more than that, but uh, you gave a lot of very insightful, free information on the Preakness, and thanks for that. But, uh, you, won't, you won't get that information anywhere else. I, <laughs> anyway, uh, I've been following the Chicago and New York teams in baseball, and it's not going too bad. Anyway, i got to run, Jim. Okay, so we'll talk to you. Uh, I'm going to continue with the podcast, but we'll talk to you on Monday. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Okay, bye, Hank. Um, let's look at the, um, well, like Hank said, he's been following the Cubs. That's an that's a interesting matchup today. Hamels against Scherzer. Uh, the game opened 124, and Scherzer, their favorite, and, and now it's up to 146, 148. So there's a lot of money coming in on Washington. And, and the Cubs are pretty tough to lay that kind of a price to because, um, you know, Hamels is pretty good. He's a left-handed pitcher, tough guy, and you, you're laying a buck and a half almost against him. That's uh, I'm not going to do that. If I do anything there, I look for dogs, but I'm not, I'm not laying those kind of numbers. I know Shears is an amazing pitcher, but um, we'll go down the road here. There's a, the Brom is going up against Miami. Miami's absolutely terrible team, 10 and 31 on the season. The Brom's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Now, I don't ever lay prices... You rarely see me lay a price over 140. The Grom is uh, the Grom is 211 uh, over Miami and Richards. You know any team can win at any time. We all know that. But I'm going to lay the Grom minus one and a half runs. I think that's the right way to go with it. If they win by one, you lose your bet. But uh, I I have way the better team, way the better pitcher. And Miami is definitely the worst team in baseball. Um, you got uh, go down to the, the American League. You got Tampa with a starter with what what they call the um, uh, you know the, the guy that starts the game as a reliever. Stanek is an amazing throws the ball very hard. Usually pitches uh, one inning. Sometimes you'll get them into the second inning. Uh, the Yankees with Sabathia are 116 to 120 over Tampa there. I expect that game to be uh, very close um, and low scoring. So I'm, that's why I'm looking at that game. Uh, we've got some other good matchups in baseball as well. You've got, you got an interleague game between St. Louis and Texas. Miklos against Leclerc. Uh, Miklos as a bad opener. They opened at 166. That's way too expensive. It's really a 130-138 game. Miklos the favorite. So there's some. Uh, you know, we got the big game tonight with Milwaukee in the, in, in, uh, in Toronto. I'm going to have two play, probably two plays on that game. Probably a side and a total. That'll be up at jimfice.com. Uh, we're going to be covering some. Uh, WSOP events, we're going to look at the odds to win the main event as that goes along and might give you some insight on that. Um, the best players in the world and a lot of uh, 
a lot of people want to be best players in the world, and there's going to be a lot of dead money. Now, this is the 50th year of the WSOP, and they have a special event. Uh, in the first, I think it starts on the 30th. It's the four one days, so it's A, B, C, D. You can get into that. It's $500, no juice on the first buy-in, so usually it would be $550. It's only $500 for the first, but you can re-buy, re-enter, and in those it'll be $550 and enter. But there's a $5 million pot with a million dollars to the to the uh, first prize. I will be playing in that, and I'll be playing in other events around Las Vegas for the summer. So the summer for me is going to be betting baseball and playing poker. And um, from time to time, if anybody sends me a request and they want to get on an action with me by buying buying a spot, uh, you know, I wouldn't charge a lot for that. A lot of people will charge like, uh, you know, on a, on a ten million ten a ten thousand dollar entry, they might say, well, ten percent will cost you twelve hundred dollars. I I would not do that. I'm not that quality of a player to do that. But I might charge. Uh, thousand fifty, uh, so which would be, you know, like half of, instead of one point one or it's a one point zero five, or one, you know, so so to get ten percent, I might do that if I, if I play in the main event, I might announce that. But if anybody's ever interested interested in that, just send me uh, send me a note uh, on Twitter or Facebook or you know. In, <clears throat> And uh, we'll we'll put it together. I'm, I, you know, I've cast many times throughout the World Series and other events in Las Vegas. It's not my profession; it's more of an avocation. And uh, but I enjoy doing it. Our picks for the weekend: uh, Hank, myself, uh, and others at JimFice.com. And uh, have a great weekend. Let's win lots of money. We'll check back with you on Monday. I might start doing some updates throughout the weekend if there's major things going on. Now, the thing with, with golf, uh, you can bet matchups each and every day in golf, and I might spot a couple up there. Now, I won't put them online for sale, but I'll just send out a podcast, and you can look for that, and I'll give you some free picks on, on the golf matchups as we go forward. Kepka, in my opinion, is far away the best player at this point, but uh, in in these majors, of course, especially, especially, he was right there, finished second in the in the Masters. Tiger, of course, came through there. I'm not a big fan of Tiger. I'm, <laughs> let, let me put it another way. Tiger is a lot older now, and yes, everything worked out in the Masters, and he slipped through the cracks, and Molinari and the other guys and, and Kepka fell, fell down a little bit and opened the doors for him to get in there. And he did get up to 14 under, and he won it by 13 under. Uh, and that was great. He's still a great player. But to make him a favorite over these guys is the wrong thing to be doing. And he's 44 years old. He's not the same guy he used to be. I don't think the consistency will be there. Right now, you want to bet him? At the start of today, he's 40 to 1. should be 150 to 1. The public is overpricing Tiger. That is not a good wager. Now, you might take him in head-to-head -head matchups against other players that you might feel he has an advantage over, but the price is on Tiger. He is way overrated. You're not getting your money's worth, and that's in my opinion. But anyway, we'll talk to you again on Monday, jimfeist.com, for anything you need for sports. My job and Hank's job and the rest of us, we want to make you money. We want you to win, and we will be giving free advice on these podcasts on a daily basis as we go forward, especially when we get to football. And um, have a good one. Stay well, and uh, we'll talk soon.